teens to know that. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, well, thanks for watching them. <laughs> I love them. Oh, thanks. Yeah, they've been super fun. Uh, and this whole silver lining is that I get to play with people, you know, from, from all over, uh, which wasn't as easy before this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it made it all the more accessible. Yeah. And like, now you also get to learn from people all over and you get to, to watch people uh, all over the world, um, which you weren't able to do as much before. True, true. <laughs> uh, do, you have, do you have any questions or anything? Um, I actually wanted to discuss something with you, but I'm not sure if we can discuss it online. We can maybe talk about it later. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, whatever you want. If you want to talk at like, if you want to talk about it, uh, not on, not live on Facebook, or if you want to chat or whatever, yeah, we can do that. I actually, I don't mind talking about it on the live session. Uh, it's about that debate that you had with uh, Jimmy Karen uh, about anger in scenes. Oh yeah, sure. Let's talk about it after our scene. I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, we've got. Let's see. We are live, and we have. One to 35 suggestions. So pick a number one to 35. Okay, uh, 15. 15, all right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, 15. This comes from uh, Lakshmi. And uh, the suggestion is precise, precise. Precise. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lakshmi. I love Lakshmi. Oh, yeah. The best, right? Oh. Yeah? I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, we're meeting now because uh, I wanted to talk to you about something. Should I close the door or... Leave it no, open? No, I think, I, I think you can leave it open, okay. but, uh, <laughs> yeah, what happened? I mean, we were friends for 20 years and yeah. you just stopped talking to me. Oh, 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 wow. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess there were some, you know, feelings that I didn't know how to process and I got scared. And I mean, I want to say like, you know, it's, it's not you, it's me, but that's so cliche <laughs> that like, but it, it, it's, I had some, you know, there were some, some things and some feelings and I was going through a lot of stuff and yeah, I just, and then, and then the thought of like getting a hold of you again got to be real overwhelming and it became a bigger deal. So then I got real scared. And then it was like, Oh, I should call her. I should call her. I should call her. And then that became like a mantra. And then I just, it days passed and I got real nervous. Can you be honest if I ask you something? Uh, yeah. Was it because I got married? <laughs> Uh, Take your time. I mean, you don't have to rush. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. Uh, you want me to be honest? Yes. Please. Uh, yeah. I really wish we could have spoken before that. I didn't think it was my place to say anything. I mean, it, you're, you're happy. What, what, I don't want to take away from your happiness. That's true. It's just, uh, you know, there was this one moment before I got married and I decided to say yes to Peter that, uh, you know, you came to me and you said that, uh, you know, there was something that you wanted to talk about and you were, you were really trying to get some time with me and I kind of, constantly was dismissing you. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know why, but in that one moment, that precise moment, 
I realized that everything had changed between us. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm glad you didn't ask me what was going on because I didn't want to cloud your judgment and shame on me for not saying anything sooner. I felt like if I had said something at that precise moment, that would have been the most selfish thing I could have done. I'm, I'm glad you're happy. I really am. I, uh... I know I am happy, but sometimes I really miss my best friend. <laughs> and yeah, I know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> You don't have to say anything. I'm just, I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, we met in that market. And I'm really glad that I could, you know, meet you and talk to you now after 20 years. It's just, I feel, I feel really happy and I feel really grateful that you're back in my life. Um, can I ask you a question? Yes. And you'll be honest? I will, I will. Did he make you happy? <laughs> In some ways, yes. In some ways, not really. Uh, can I ask? Can I ask another question? Yes, please. Uh, in what ways did Peter not make you happy? <sighs> You know that, you know that moment where everything changed between us? Yeah. What I missed about that moment was that you were someone that I could sit with and sit in silence and just not talk for days. But with Peter, I felt like there was no room for silence. And I think I, I really wanted a friend in Peter even though I was in love with him. <laughs> Which I think I probably could have found with you. <laughs> and if I had, if I had been more generous, not generous, if I had just been more accepting of the situation, nothing would have changed. I could have still been that friend, but instead I was, I was real selfish and I was hurt and it was nothing you did. And I had no right to say, I had, I'll be honest with you. I had in my mind, I was going to stand up at the wedding. It was going to be like a movie moment <laughs> where I was going to stand up and say, I object, but it was easier for me just not to go uh, because I, of nothing to do with you, but every, it was a selfish thing. Like, and we weren't, you know, it was, it was such a long time ago. Uh, and I thought it would be so romantic if I did that, but then I thought about it and said it would be the most selfish thing I could do is to take away from your happiness. And so I really like that, that kicked off a year where I kind of, before it was cool, I kind of went off the grid, you know, I, I, I really spent time just trying to, to figure out what the deal was with me. And, and then the more I thought about getting hold of you, the more I was like, well, I don't want to, you know, it was very selfish. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to, you know, ruin what's happening. And then it just became easier. I guess, you know, it just became easier to distance myself. I think, you know, maybe I, if I could go back in time, I would yeah. have wished that, you know, you would have crashed that wedding and stopped it. Really? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you felt this, but sometimes you wish for something, but you don't necessarily need that thing. Yeah. I think Peter was that thing for me. I wished for him and I loved him completely and I don't deny that. But I know that I needed you. I didn't need Peter. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but I love, you're always seeing the good in everything. You're always like, <laughs> but. I'm, 
can i i just you know i don't know how to explain this but now that i have you here with me yeah i'm just grateful that i have my best friend back <laughs> i was so scared that you wouldn't feel this way and i thought this whole time you were just going to you were going to be upset with me you were going to yell at me that's why that's why i said that we should you know meet here in the library so that you <laughs> i always heard like well you should meet around people just in case but then as i was walking up i was like wait a minute kelly would never do that that's one thing she would never do she would not even if you were upset You've never been a person who's screamed or yelled. I think you aren't that person either. No. I mean, I I think that's the one thing that I love about you. <laughs> that I mean, I've had these fights with Peter where all I've done is cry because you know I can't get angry. Yeah. But Peter has always been somebody who probably screams. <sighs> I'm not trying to say he's bad. He's my husband and you know there's nothing wrong with him, but it's just that the moment we met in that market and the moment I realized that you miss me and I mean I I you know when you left I felt that you didn't miss me. I just felt like there was a hole in my life somehow, <laughs> but <laughs> No. Oh my. That makes me feel I mean in you it I understand that. I feel terrible because I, it's the complete opposite. I mm-hmm. I I came out of a year of self-imposed isolation and it was this hole that I've never been able to fill of somebody who you could just sit in silence, you don't have to say anything and just be with like no nobody Nobody gets that. Very few people on this planet can experience that. And because I was I don't know, naive or or immature or selfish or just a different place in my life, I I viewed him as a competition when he was in a competition. I don't think you're naive or immature, so I I think you're amazing. And I mean, I think before you and I leave this library I think the books are actually creating the moment for us. This is the precise moment that I want to remember all of my life because maybe we will meet again, maybe we won't, maybe you will get married, but before I go can we just sit in silence for a while? Yeah. Do you want to hold my hand? <laughs> More than anything. <laughs> before i go you know there's this one moment when we hugged in the market when we met again yeah and that is when i realized that you missed me as much as you did yeah that hug said it all maybe let's just meet again are you kidding me I'm not going to have my life without you. Me neither. <laughs> wow. Me too. (laughs) 
Sim. <risos> Uau! Oh my God! That was awesome! Uau! Wow. Uh... I didn't want to say that. <laughs> I mean, my heart's like racing. I actually had my hand on my heart. I, I don't... <laughs> that was so great. It was a lot of fun. Wow, I mean, it was just so, uh, I, it was so like authentic, you know? And I think for me, it was very cathartic. Yeah? How so? Um, I was just thinking of all the heartbreaks that I've gone through. <laughs> <laughs> so. Release them in this moment, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, in that moment too of like, I mean, I think people have had those experiences of like uh, former relationships getting married that you still hold a, a flame to and you're like, I'm going to go and uh, like in the movies, I object to this, but it's like the most selfish thing you could do. And that's it. But we're, we're taught that like that's the most romantic thing. And really, it's not. It's not. In fact, uh, yesterday, just yesterday, I probably think that that was the offer I gave you because of the same reason that I watched Friends yesterday. And I watched that episode where Rachel is heading to the airport to stop oh, yeah. Ross's wedding with Emily. And... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because of that that I gave this off of or something. <laughs> maybe. I think like, I do think that things in our life that are happening make their way in when we improvise. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you look at a lot of those shows, it's like, oh, that person who gets jilted at the altar is not a terrible person. A lot of times they're just good people or, or they're made out to seem like somewhat hapless or, or what have you. But uh, and then the other t the, the, the person comes in and is like, I object to this happiness. And then that other person, it's, <laughs> it's silly. And it's something that we get conditioned to as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you start improvising? Like what, what made you uh, <laughs> pick the, the, the class or do the show? Uh, so I, I always wanted to learn improv as a, a teenager. Yeah. But um I don't think I had the language to probably understand that what I was doing was improv because at home I would just have these weird characters that I would do and at home everybody would think I was just very silly as a person. But uh, <laughs> yes. uh, it was uh, this was last year, 2019. It was on my birthday that um, I was in a really bad place, honestly. I was just, there was a lot of things that were happening in my life. A lot of changes, big changes, which were not great changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I asked my parents, they asked me, what do you want? And um, I said, I don't want anything like a gift. I want you to give me a class. And Come they said, on. what class? Which class? And I said, improv. I'm like, okay. So the first improv, the first day of my improv class was on my birthday. No. <laughs> and this was just yeah. last year? Yeah, it was last year. My parents gave me improv classes as a present one year for Christmas. That's how I got into improv. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know anything about it. They're like, hey, we think you'd like this. And I was like, okay. And that was it. Uh oh. <laughs> I know. How was, how was your first class? Oh, I'll never forget it. The, I go into class. The first thing I remember uh, the teacher said was like, okay, everybody stand up. You're going to walk around the space. Uh, imagine a string from the top of your head pulling you to the ceiling. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, now it slides to your nose. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. cool. This is great. <laughs> what, my chin? Oh, and I was, that was the first thing I remember doing. That was like day one, and I loved it. I didn't have any desires to do anything with it. It was just like, oh, these, these people seem pretty cool in this class. Uh, it's, I'm not by myself up there. That's really good. And then, you know, each class just like became more fun and more fun. And, and that was it. And I think what I love about improv is that uh, it's like an art form where you never feel alone. Yeah, totally. It's a connection. <laughs> it's you're with other people. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, how do you find that connection virtually? 
And I think you can do it. I mean, I think like that scene we just did is a great example of like, you could still have connection. You can have emotion. You can have all the same things that you have on stage if you allow your imagination to open up. And I could actually feel like I was holding your hand for some reason. Because you were, that's the thing. <laughs> because you believe it and you were, I told it was like, yeah, absolutely. Like you have to buy into what you're doing. You have to yes and yourself in these moments. And, and you know, the more uh, I perform, the less uh, I care about being right or making the right move. And the more I just care about, can I just really buy into this moment? Can I buy into our relationship? Can I buy into the scenario? And can I be into it as well? Like, there's nothing worse to me than a scene with two people that starts off in love and then at the end they've broken up. Oh yeah. Which is like, it's a fear thing I think where they're like, ah, I want a divorce. It's like, where did that come from? <laughs> Uh, and you had a question about anger in a scene. We talked a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, what, yeah, what, what did you want to know? So, um, you know, Jimmy had, uh, okay, so I heard your episode with Jimmy Karen, Improv Nerd with Jimmy Karen, and yeah. um, he had a point of view that anger in scenes actually is a good thing. And you, on the other hand, uh, had a very different perspective on anger, using anger in scenes. Um, so, I mean, you explained it, but then you, I think there was not enough room there for you to probably uh, explain it further. So I just want to know why you think that anger is not a good emotion to probably use. Oh, yeah. Um, and and what, I, what I think is just like my, it, these are my thoughts. It's not like, you know, here's the right answer. It's just based on like experience and, and preference of play. Absolutely. But I think I also think anger is a very superficial passing emotion, and there's so much more beneath that. Like it could be frustration or disappointment or fear, but like anger itself is such an easy default. And a lot of times I see anger that's directed at scene partners, and there's no like resolution of it. It's just like I hate you, I hate you too, and then the scene's <laughs> over, and it's like. And I think there's enough anger in the world. And to add to, for me to go on stage with someone and be like, I got your back right before I go on stage. And then in the scene, be mad with them. I think it's just, uh, for me, it's, yeah. And I've, maybe it's like, I've done enough scenes where I'm angry or I just don't see it. It shuts off what can happen. And I'm, I'm about the play and the ease of play. So if you can say something, I go, yeah. And then my default, instead of being angry with you, why don't I also be that same kind of person? So we're both have that. Now, if you use anger at, I'm angry at this thing that shouldn't be angry at, I think that's funny because I'm looking like the fool. If I'm mad at this door and I'm like, fuck you, why did they put this door here? Open the door, why is the door? <laughs> if now that's making me the fool, which I enjoy because I'm controlling it, I'm, I'm taking that on myself. Or if I get angry at my own choices as a character, that's fine. But I just don't think anger directed at your partner ever does anything. I don't think people go to an improv show and say, boy, I hope there's anger tonight. I, re I really hope this show where I'm promised to have fun, uh, I hope they get mad at each other. I just don't see the value in it. I, I, I think it's unless you're, you're billing the show as it's a, you know, an angry show. But even like I've seen dramatic improv where it's like it's unearned people killing each other for no reason. There's no build up to it. And and they, they don't realize that when you have anger in like a play or a TV show, you also have a resolution. It's something that's been written. They know the end result. Anger in improv to me is just something that it's like sarcasm. It's just unless you're making yourself look like a fool there. To me, it's like, uh, let's get past that. Let's get to the fun and the joy because that's. Why did you get into improv? You got into it because your first class, you're like, I don't know what's happening, but it's fun. I'm going to come back. You didn't get into improv because you're like, man, I'm getting yelled at. This is fantastic. Yeah, that's true. And I think anger is her, like there was this, um, you know, therapist that I spoke to about, you know, anger. And she said something very interesting. She said, anger is hurt on fire. So when you are vulnerable about something, you get angry. So instead of really focusing on the anger, which the fascinating part is I can't really get angry at people when I'm like in my real life, I can't get angry. 
But yeah. in scenes, sometimes I choose anger as an emotion. You're not alone. But, yeah. But it's it, the vulnerability that's the real focus, I think. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think people like teachers have told students, make a strong emotional choice. And the first thing people think of is anger. The yeah. same with high status. When people are told, like, to play a high status character, a lot of times they're yelling at people beneath them. And it's like, that's not high status. A high status person, when they walk into a room, they know everyone's looking at them. They don't have to demand anything. And so that to me is a more fun way to play high status is like, I own this place, not go get me something to drink. You know, I think that's a very, I think yelling is a very low status move. So, uh, and I think like, you're right, we're very scared. And then our default to protect ourselves in that moment of vulnerability is to go anger versus like, you know, what's a really fun emotion to play is, is hurt or disappointed. Mm -hmm. Like somebody says something at you and be hurt by it, not angry about it, but be hurt by it. I think that that gives you so much more room than anger. Um, I also don't like confrontation. So in <laughs> improv, I, and, and you're not alone. Like there are people who outside of improv, like are, are, have no, don't get in arguments, don't fight. But for some reason, I think when, and I, I'm not saying this about you, but for some reason, when some people get on stage, they either look at this like I finally get to be angry or uh, I'm so scared I'm going to do this and lash out to protect myself because I'm afraid of being uh, ridiculed or uh, embarrassed or made fun of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And Jimmy, and I play, I play with Jimmy. Uh, I play with Jimmy. Uh, I play with uh, a bunch of people, with Dave Rosalski, who have no problem doing anger in scenes. Uh, a lot of times I just don't engage. I had, a, I had a teacher once who said to me, this was, I don't know, 15 years ago, probably stopped the class and said, um, I was in a scene with a friend and we were at, at a Starbucks having coffee and I was being sarcastic and like fighting. And she goes, freeze, freeze. Do you like each other off stage? And I was like, oh, we're best friends. She goes, okay, like each other on stage. And it changed everything. And I was like, and then I remember thinking, wow, I, there were a couple of people in my life who were like, you're really sarcastic. And I was going through, you know, some, some personal stuff at the time and it bled over to my improv. So I think, you know, our first goal is to make each other look good. And, and mm -hmm. I can't make you look good by being angry at you or telling you to stop your choices. Like That's true. I can embrace it and I can go, oh, wait a minute. Let me, what did you just say? Yeah, my re reaction might've been anger. Let me take a moment and pause and think about what do I, I'm going to say the thing I don't say in life, which might be like, hey, that hurt me, which I would never say in life. But that's, those are the choices I like to make in improv rather than like, I'm going to be mad. Uh, I also have a friend, my friend Bill Baylor, who on stage, I've been in shows with him where somebody is like trying to, to get him to fight even in a playful way. And he just looks at the person and goes, I'm not going to fight with you. Like he just says it. And then if they want to fight, he just walks, he doesn't, he just turns and walks off stage. <laughs> And it's so, and he's like the most fun guy to play with. And, and he's just all about the moment, but he, he sees it as like, there's no, what's the point in getting mad right now? Let's explore and have fun. Hmm. Um, are you, uh, where can people find you online? Like if they want to watch you do shows or connect with you, what's the, what's the best way? So uh, you can find me online on Facebook, uh, on, uh, but I also am part of an ensemble. Uh, it's called uh, Comendians. Yes. Uh, yes. So <laughs> we just, we still haven't started our social media page, but we're going to start it soon. Uh, but you can find me on Instagram. My name is uh, that girl inside the library. So you can find me there and uh, you can also find me on Facebook. So yeah, I do some character work videos also. Oh, well, I had so much fun playing with you. It was so easy. And I, uh, I can't wait to play with you again, whether it's uh, live or... Here. This is the first <laughs> time I cried in a scene. Isn't it great? It's, it's beautiful. It just feels so good. <laughs> it's so good. And we don't, you know, I, I really love watching. It's emotional connection. So I love those, like crying in a scene to me is so much better than laughter. To me, like to get an audience to cry, it's beautiful. Yeah. I can't I wait. Yeah, Thanks. I had so much fun. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>